Now, never-ending quest to bring you art on the cutting edge, we've stumbled on an exhibit that may be only skin deep, but still leaves an indelible impression. Richard Schlesinger bears all. It's almost alive. One of the most famous pictures of Charles Lindbergh, originally a photograph taken in the 20s, now part of a body of work on display at the American Museum of Natural History. Straight to the museum wall from Scotty Lowe's back. Scotty's an aviation enthusiast and his back is a piece of work. We had been coming to the Natural History Museum for many years uh, with my children and everything and it was so satisfying to think that I had uh, worked myself into part of the artifacts here without being a dinosaur, you know? <laughs> it was very fun. At this world-class, world-famous museum, just upstairs from the dinosaurs, you'll find the exhibit called Body Art, Marks of Identity. 600 objects and pictures, African ear ornaments, ancient Egyptian makeup kits, Indian henna painting, body piercing from long ago and far away, and tattoos, as here and now as anything in a natural history museum can be. This is Northwest Coast Indians. In the past, they used to tattoo clan crests of... Uh, Enid Schildkraut is the curator of the exhibit who sees art here amid the dragons and serpents so you can that camouflage the, the body. And the tattoos are a way of transforming the body into art and it communicates messages the same way that any art communicates messages about who you are. But it's rooted in the history of art wherever it takes place. And just like other forms of art, tattoos tell a story about the person wearing them, about what he or she has accomplished. It's hard to imagine in Western culture where tattoos are rarely seen in polite society, but in some cultures, tattoos were signs of rank a sort of primitive medal, a badge of honor. Their status symbols, the only the upper class, the most tattooed person would be the highest status person. If you have a full body tattoo, you have spent a lot of money on it. You know what that's like? So. That's like people wearing expensive jewelry. Only, only rich people can afford a diamond necklace. That's right. In many of the exhibits, it's hard to see the human body that makes up the tattoo artist's canvas. This is Horiyoshi III, who was a famous uh, tattoo artist in Japan, holding his son. He it's said, shocking at first. It's shocking at first, um, but I think at first they don't realize this is a body, and then they see the hand. The whole thing becomes more and more human as you, realize, as you look at it, I think, and more and more of a, you realize the tenderness between the father and his child. An exhibit like this seems almost unnatural for a natural history museum, and this is not the type of thing about which museum curators know a lot. Enid Schulkraut needed help putting this body art exhibit together, so she called one of the new masters of this old medium. At first, I thought it was a prank phone call, to tell you the truth. I really did, because in tattooing, you know, people play funny games with each other. So I'm thinking, is this for real? Michael McCabe became a kind of consultant to the museum. Hey, uh, do you want to talk to this gentleman about getting uh, some letters? Okay. He brings an odd assortment of talents to the job. He's a tattoo expert and he has a master's degree in anthropology. Unfortunately, if we were to tattoo you and you weren't 18, we can get a lot of trouble. He's not so well known in uptown parlor society, but he manages this downtown parlor, the sacred tattoo. All of us who have been tattooing for many years, we've just all been doing it. We've been pursuing our art form. And then all of a sudden, you get this knock on the door, and it's mainstream America or mainstream world curious about what you're up to. And uh, there's always been a degree There's of, nothing more mainstream than the American Museum of Natural History. Yeah, I mean, they're making stuff palatable for, for the general public. Michael McCabe's work for the respectable Museum of Natural History could have caused a culture clash. Did you design this? Some of it. No, not everything, though. Which part a lot of people in his tattoo parlor have tastes that could be considered yeah. unconventional. Not long ago, Victoria Newbill stopped in for a tattoo. What are you getting tattooed? Uh, RSP. Now, RS I drew this at lunch. RSP is not 
It's not your initials? No. What is RSP? Raw sexual power. But is it art? Um, it can be. No, I mean the tattoo, not the... <laughs> the fact is, a lot of the tattoo artists here have tried their hand at more traditional forms of expression. David Senna has done his share of scorpions and spiders on various parts of various bodies. But he's also done this and this. I do drawing and photography and some video work. And David believes working in skin is almost like working on canvas. You can build up layers of color and transparencies of color. And the thing about the skin is you can mix the ink in the skin. You can go over it with a layer of color and go it with the wash of another color, which is like a watered-down version. First thing you have to do is fill out this form, OK? Like David Senna, Michael McCabe has done more mainstream work. But before he got the call from the Museum of Natural History, McCabe had turned his back on the conventional art world. I became somewhat disillusioned with the elitism of the art world. Just, uh, it wasn't like what you knew, it was like who you knew and uh, how well you dressed and how well you, you know, networked at various cocktail parties. The images in the museum halls are striking, but they beg that question so frequently asked at those cocktail parties. Is this art? You can't not think these are art. You can't not think that the skin is some kind of incredible canvas because they're so complex and they're so rich um, pictorially. The art world might feel a little more at home now with people they might not otherwise know. The tattoo world certainly does. Make any new friends? Absolutely. Uptown friends? Um, yeah. Any of them show up here looking for a tattoo? You never know. They might have come incognito with a big pair of sunglasses. <laughs> I do know people who might just wear a jacket without a shirt and show their tattoos. You know people like that? I do. I've met people like Did that. Did you have them for dinner? Now I probably would. <laughs> Who I would mix them with, that's another question. <laughs> it would be an interesting dinner party. Art has the same meaning in both worlds. We leave you this morning in the grassy plains